For a while there, ChatGPT first came out, everybody was using it to send emails to people, text messages to people. Man, I know that's not how you write, and it's all formal, the grammar is accurate. I knew people were screwed up. People knew it wasn't me when it was the grammar. When all of a sudden this thing has zero grammatical errors, you know that's AI. That's not Josh Wilson, that, that's a mess. But you can use these tools for all this. The, the thing is, use the tool to enhance what you're doing. Don't use the tool to replace what you're doing. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Big Dog Podcast. I'm Josh Wilson, and I got the number one son, Logan, across the table from me. What up, boy? What up? What up, what up? Welcome to the studio. Thanks. Let's talk AI. All right. You know him? No. He knows you. Oh, yeah. All AI. We talked about AI months ago on the show, and we were talking about some things that we use it for, and it was like super, super super base level like when i first started screwing out chat gpt and stuff like that now we've got ai integrated to the business like all over the place and people the the percentage of people that are actually making use of the tools are crazy the argument of this is going to take jobs this is going to take my job this is going to take so much. no but it can enhance your ability to do yours doesn't have to replace you but like any other tool it can make your job not easier, but make it more effective. If I got to put a nail through that wall, if I didn't have a hammer, right, could I still get the nail through the wall with my hand? Yeah, probably. Would it be a little more enjoyable, slightly easier if I had a hammer? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you use when you build shit? Hammer. A hammer. Rather than like hand. You use a hammer. These tools are there. How stupid are you if you're a framer yeah and you're framing houses, everyone else is using hammers, and you're just out here using your hand, holding Pretty rocks. Cool. I'm not going to use that tool. I'm not going to use that resource. You guys are weak. You guys are lazy. AI's a hammer, bro. It's just a tool that helps you to do your job better if you learn how to use it. So why are you scared of it? Because it's freaking scary. That's why you're scared of it. It is scary. We use AI in lots of different ways. We use AI for scheduling meetings. We use AI for uh, confirmations. We use AI in uh, chat formats and, and bots and communicate with clients when they initially are coming in. We use AI for communication post-training uh, you know, or post-appointments. We use AI to help determine uh, forecasting and pricing. We use AI to filter through data to get to a baseline of the meat of what I need to know to help make decisions for the business. We use AI to look at social media strategies. We use AI to help come up with topics for our blogs and you know relevant graphics and side articles and stuff like that to use as well. We use AI across the board. And I feel like we, we understand this little bitty much of it. And honestly, that's probably all the bit of its capabilities that we're even making use of. Because I'm a dumbass. Like, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, it... I'm not a computer whiz. I'm not anything. Like, I want to Google a solution. I'm going to find a solution, and then I'm going to take action, and we'll get it done. But, man, this AI stuff is great. You know, we've got these chat bots that we've trained to be able to communicate and walk people through the processes. Um, that's really great. My One of my favorite tools we're doing using right now is called Pre-Draft AI, and that helps us with blogs and articles, um, take our concepts and, and our drafts, help clean it up, help find relevant articles that we can plug in. It's a great tool. It's a tremendous tool. Um, a lot of people have to use like chat GPT and, and some other, I think there's one called uh, flick dot AI. And that is like uh, create social media content. It, and that's cool and all like, that's great. But the thing is guys, you got to remember that it still needs to very much sound like you. It, it, it has to be, you know, your voice, your tonality, your, sense of humor your personality still needs to come through in this communication so you know people will use chat gpt and it's like give me a facebook post to educate people on five tips five most common tips to help improve your chance of success when it comes to potty training 
your eight-week-old puppy, right? And it'll write for you an entire article. It'll give you an example heading. It'll give you example example subject. It will give you the, the teaser. It'll give you a graphic. It'll give you whatever you want. You ask it, you give it specifics, boom, it'll put it all together. And you can copy that joker and you can paste it. Everybody can tell. Everybody can tell. For a while there, ChatGPT first came out. Everybody was using it to um, to send emails to people, text messages to people. Man, I know that's not how you write. And it's all formal. The grammar is accurate. I knew people were screwed up. People knew it wasn't me when it was the grammar. When all of a sudden this thing has zero grammatical errors, you know that's AI. That's not Josh Wilson. That, that's a mess. But you can use these tools for all this. The, the thing is, use the tool to enhance what you're doing. Don't use the tool to replace what you're doing. It, it Can it replace you? Sure, in a lot of aspects. You can't replace the need, the human need, for relational interaction. And particularly like if you're in sales right now and you're trying to use AI for sales and that's all you're doing. You've got bots in place. Everything's automation. Everything's bots. And even some, some of the best AI right now is, is it, it's all learning, but you can teach it and train it in these conversations to do better and better and better. And it does get pretty scary how correct it can be and how accurate it can be in its responses. But there's still that element of this isn't a person. At least for me, like I pick up on it all the time, particularly the more we start making use of it in business. I recognize it in other businesses, you know, in their communication and stuff. But we use it in so many different facets of our work, and it's helping us be more effective. It's helping us to get more done in shorter periods of time. It's helping us to do way more than we've ever done with less people. Some of the stuff we're doing right now, even though we have a large team, we two, three years ago, we wouldn't be able to do half the stuff that we're doing right now if it wasn't for AI and different types of technology. And so figure out how to use a tool. And don't go out there and start downloading every single AI app that's out there for business. Don't Google that, all right? Find areas that you are weak in, that you need to improve, maybe pass off and do some research and find some, find some options. Before you get into any AI, though, since we're talking about software and, and things, in your business, are you using a type of CRM at all? You know, is there any type of CRM database management that you use? Because if you don't have that in place, you're just going to jump and start using AI in all these different places. If you're going to spend time getting comfortable with software you need, or a new tool, you need to start with the CRM. You need to start with a management of your leads and processes for communicating with your leads and being able to convert more leads. If you're working off of one of these right now, still in 2023, which is a funny example to give since I'm literally working off of one of these in 20, okay, scratch that. No, but seriously, this isn't where I'm tracking sales calls. This isn't where I'm tracking clients. This is me. This is my comfortability. I barely ever reference back to these books, and I probably have hundreds of these books over the last you know, 25 years that I've been in the working world, you know, hundreds of these books and I write, I'm a, I'm, I, I learn by writing and rarely do I go back and read it again. But the re action of the writing, it helps me to retain whether it's something I remember to do, um, something that I'm legitimately learning, a speaker I'm hearing. I love this. Type it in my phone, which, which most normal people do nowadays, doesn't do anything for me. I have to write it. Or I can listen to it also. So or maybe I'll record. I love to listen back to stuff. Um, but writing in the moment is what I do. For years and years and years, this was also how I managed sales. Brutal. 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 Now we've got great software that we use that we've built out and makes a lot of sense. And we can manage all of our resources through that. Do you have something like that? If not, you need something like that. You know, hit us up and I'll show you. We'll give you a demo. We'll show you how to, how to use what we use, how to get set up with it. Um, you got to have a way to manage these leads. You got to have a way to stay on top of them. Use software. Use the tools that are there. You get more efficient. You get more intentional. Your excellence increases. Client experience improves. It's crazy. I make more money. I'm booking more dogs. I'm installing more windows. I'm installing more HVAC. I'm getting more, you know, plumbing repair jobs. I'm selling more cars. Whatever it may be, you're doing better because you're taking better care of the leads that are coming about to you.
That's what we're using AI for also. We're just taking it a step further, using AI in that communication with leads, using AI in ongoing client communication and management, using AI to come up with systems and processes, ideas about things that may be relevant people want to learn more about. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, filtering through data. If we're trying to make a decision on what's the, the best next step for us to take, and we're trying to weigh between five or six different things, we can make use of tools that are out there that can scour the web to do the research in seconds that would take us days and weeks potentially to do and compile a list of pros and cons. Now, yet, yeah, you still need to double check some stuff? Absolutely. Do you take everything that AI spits out as factual and 100% truth? Absolutely not. You double check some stuff and make sure, you know, it's legit. But it saves so much time because we're making use of tools. People are so scared of change. People are so scared of new tools. And I'm telling you right now, you got to make, if, you, if you're not learning with new technologies, implementing new systems, and getting comfortable with this stuff, you're going to get left behind. And I don't care what industry you're in. I don't care. I don't care. You're going to get left behind. Because what this is doing for the people who are using these tools, it's creating margin. And we're putting that margin, and what we're doing with that margin is we're getting better. We're talking to more people. We're recruiting better staff. We're bringing on more clients. We're expanding to new areas with that margin. Because we're not flipping through the book trying to remember what it was I talked to Miss Janet about four and a half weeks ago and where we left that conversation, right? Because I know exactly when Miss Janet calls me what we talked about every single time. I see every conversation. I can hear every call. I see every text message. I know everything that's going on with that person. And a click of one button, that's a combo of tech. AI, CRM, working together. Smart calendars, working together. Some of this stuff is new. Some of this stuff is not. It's been around for a couple of years. And it gets better and better and better. And again, those who are using it is creating margin. And the ones creating margin are going to shut you down because you can't keep up. You cannot keep up. That margin, we take the time to be more relational with the potential client or your existing clients. Relationships are important right now. People are, you can, you can find anything online that you want to buy, any service you need, any product you need, you just Google it, find it, Amazon, find it. But people want that relational interaction, particularly with years of not having it. Everybody's stuck at home and all that crap. People are over it. That's why people have been so freaking weird and, and, and pissed off and grumpy like the last year, 18 months. I think it was because subconsciously people liked, they liked working from home. They liked being home. They liked not having to go to the office. But then the flip of that is human nature is to have relationship and interact with people. And so now everyone's being shitty. Man, why are they so grumpy? Why are they in such a bad mood? Well, it's like you forgot how to act. All of a sudden, you weren't around people. Now, all of a sudden, you're around people, and everybody's short. And everybody's grumpy and all these things. When the reality is, we just forgot how to be relational. And so what's happening is we're seeing the relationship-based selling increasing, increasing, increasing. And people are being really way more dependent upon that. Every industry is competitive. Every industry is going to require excellence to excel. Those who are creating margin, though, can focus more on the relationships and that's where they're going to have the opportunities to grow. The only way to create margin, though, is to make use of tools, become more efficient. What tools are you using right now in your business that work out great for you? Comment, you know, share them with us. If you don't have any tools that you make use of, if you're just flat scared of tech, you're not using a CRM, hit us up. We'll, we'll drop a list for you of our favorite things. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll put in the show notes and on social media a link to, you know, our top 10 favorite, you know, tools that we're using, whether it's an AI uh, site that we're using, CRM, stuff like that. We'll post all that to share with you guys. And you can comment and do the same. And together as a community, we can help each other to do better and improve. Make use of the tools. Increase margin. Get more deals. We'll catch you next time on the Big Dog Podcast.